So today is June 18th of 2019, and that means it's been about three years since I've built the little long life blinking jewel thief. Now, if you're a long time subscriber, you may remember this guy, but this thing is still blinking away after three years. So what exactly is this? Well, it's basically a jewel thief circuit that's been modified to blink. And in doing so, it only takes one little pulse of power every once in a great while, and it will last for a very long time. Now when I built this, I went ahead and just soldered it directly to the battery and everything is wired up dead bug style and glued onto the side of the battery. And I've got a magnet on the back of it here so I can just stick it to a refrigerator. Now soldering it straight to the battery is probably not the greatest idea ever, but hey, it hasn't leaked yet, so I'm expecting it to not leak. And if anyone's curious, the expiration date on the battery is December 2023. Now I did go ahead and dig out the schematic for this guy. And I'll go ahead and let you look at that. So as you can see, the schematic for this thing really is just a standard jewel thief, but it's got a couple of modifications. That being, usually this resistor would be around 1K or so instead of 100K. And also this capacitor that's in parallel with this resistor wouldn't normally exist on a jewel thief. But this capacitor mainly is what makes it blink. And if you wanted to change the blink rate, you could change the capacitor or resistor values. Both of those would affect the blink rate. Now on the back of this guy, are the voltages at different dates. So June 20th, 2016, it was at exactly 1.6 volts. Six months later, we were at 1.526, and then one year from the day that I built it, it was at 1.5, and two years from when I built it, it was 1.471, and we're about to find out what it's at three years after I built it. All right, here we go, let's check this out. We're at 1.429 volts. I'll go ahead and write that on here. Today is the 18th of June in 2019. 1.429 volts. So from last year to this year, we've lost approximately 40 millivolts in the battery, which isn't a whole lot at all. And really, with the battery still around 1.4 volts, it's still got plenty of life in it. If you're familiar with this series, you may be familiar with this guy. This is another one of these things which I built roughly a year earlier than this one. And this one's got a red LED in it. You'll see blinks a little bit faster than the blue one. And this one has been going off of the same battery as well for all this time. And if you're curious as to why I soldered the battery to it, it's because this little single AA battery holder, you'll notice if I like squeeze it or do anything with it, the flash rate of the LED changes. So that battery holder seems to not make a great contact. But anyway, let's see what kind of voltage this one has left in it. Yeah, it's still around 1.1, so that's still in pretty good shape. I'm not sure what that one was at before. What I do know is that this battery wasn't full when I first put it in here. And the reason why the battery wasn't full when I put it in here is because when I put in a new battery, the forward voltage on that little red LED is low enough to the point where it just lights up off of the battery. Because if you look at the schematic, you'll see the LED is essentially, goes through the transformer there, but it's more or less just hooked straight across the battery. And with that fully charged battery, it just kind of lit the LED up and it didn't, uh, it didn't blink, it was just on all the time, so that didn't work too well. So if you are gonna try to build one of these, I'd recommend using a blue, green, or white LED as opposed to red or yellow, because the red and yellow LEDs typically have a lower forward voltage, and apparently it's low enough to the point where a single AA can light them up. So anyway, I'm just gonna let this circuit continue to blink away as I have been the last three years, and we'll see how long this thing will last for. Now, if the battery were to continue to discharge at the rate that it is now at about 40 millivolts every year, Year, that would mean that it would take about another 10 years to get the battery voltage down to 1.0 and of course this thing will continue to operate until the battery voltage is below probably about 0.8 volts or whatever it takes to turn the transistor on 
So this thing has a long ways to go before the battery is dead. Now the real question here is whether or not the circuit is going to drain the battery before the self-discharge of the battery starts to play a significant role. So looking at the data that I've collected over the last three years, I'm expecting this to be able to last at least another five years. Now as I said, in theory we should be able to easily get 10 more years, but I think the self-discharge of the battery might prevent that from happening but I would expect this to last at least another five years, if not more. And if anyone else has built one of these things in the last three years, I'd be curious to know how yours is holding up, because I know I've seen comments on some of the other videos that people have built these things and have them set up. So if any of you guys are watching, I'd be curious to know how yours are doing. And if any of you have predictions as to how long this thing will last, looking at the data that I have here, or just experience with self-discharge and batteries, I'd also love to hear about that, so you can leave that information in the comments as well. But anyway, if you liked the video, go ahead and click on that like button. And if you want to see more of my projects like this one, click on that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.